Yeah, so let's, let's talk about the chakra here a lot. So, so, uh, like, so one of the things that you, out of the books that we decided to do, I'm going to allow ESA to uh, use a local config. One of the things that I, um, out of the books that is that with chakra UI, if you notice the, the template here, is that um, it installs, um, okay, I'm just going gonna, gonna to disable that. It, it like it pulls in like we're, we're not like installing all the components manually for you mm. um like with the plugin so that means we, we're trying to keep the bundle sizes as small as possible um even though it's actually you know chakra is already relatively small compared to most of its peers um like everything with chakra ui is around 85 kilobytes um well that's tiny. and you can and you can still tree shake it i know there's um there's, and I know a lot of libraries are, are you know, trying to see how to find ways to do it. But uh, I was just really happy that this is something I thought about, I planned out of the box because it's just, it's just, it's just really good. And it, allow, it allows us to be able to use the chakra loader. So what, so what the chakra loader does is that it does this work for us. Like, you know, so it does, you don't have to manually import the component and then you have to register it here. Yeah, that's chakra a headache. UI. Exactly. So what the webpack loader does is that once every time like it encounters a view template, it will read this template and it will look for all chakra UI components like this, right? Mm -hmm. And when, whenever it finds a chakra UI component, it will then automatically import this using this kind of static import as well and register the component for you. So, you know, you don't have to do all that work manually. So it's, it's, a, it's very convenient. Um, so you still get your tree shaking and you still get the best developer experience and you don't need all this boilerplate, you know? Okay. What is tree shaking? Yeah. So tree shaking is, um, is a feature of Webpack that okay. allows you to only to like use and use only modules. It only um, extracts modules from your, in, in, in your project that you are actually using that you actually okay. import um, for you and it will discard the rest in your final build. So mm -hmm. that's what tree shaking is. So if you, so the ability to like import like very specific modules like this from a library um, means that that library is tree shakeable. In um, most cases, like um, if you'd have to pull in like the whole library and it's, it's very, it's very um, related with how you build, how you structure your application. So okay. it's also one of those things that, when you're building your own personal projects, you need to, to um, think at. about, yeah. Um, so it's good for like your bundles, final bundle size. A lot of the times when people like find like performance problems with their projects, um, especially with bundle size, the first thing they'll try and do is like blame the modules they import. Um, <laughs> but I, I think it's the first thing that you want to look at is how am I building or structuring projects? For example, yeah. my, my pages. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting feature. So cool. We have a project that works, dark mode, light mode enabled. Um, do you want to have dark mode account. enabled? Oh yeah, yeah everything works here. Yeah. I think let's keep that. Okay. All right. So first I'm going to develop as though we don't need it. Because um, honestly, I really think dark mode is like a nice to have. It's cool, but it's just like but not it's really not like necessary. <laughs> yeah. So um, first, first of all, I am going to I want to I want to delete this whole this whole this whole import stuff because we don't need it. Let's um, do it. Delete it. Yeah, all. we don't need it. And just to prove that it works, we're going to import the chakra UI loader, mm -hmm. the chakra loader, and then after that we'll clear we'll clear this whole this whole page. Okay. So you first, installed it already. Yeah? Uh, let's. Did we get it installed? I, I haven't. I haven't I haven't yet okay. installed it. So Jan add, it's a dev dependency, a chakra loader. This is one of my, the most fun projects I've worked on. It was really yeah. interesting uh, learning how Webpack like processes things. And it was really, really fun. I did, had a good time working on it. Webpack cool. is a very interesting uh, project. Although I'm seeing a lot of- It really um, is. Not necessarily hate. Um, mm. the people complain about how heavy and slow it can be, and people are really going for roll up these days. I had fun mm -hmm. with roll up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, roll up is roll up has really gotten like a lot of improvement lately, and I mm -hmm. think how roll up introduced itself as a bundler to the community was as this minimum like 
config, you know, like as little config as possible before you can finally like use, uh, finally like use it, right? That's how they introduce themselves. And I think that's how it gained popularity. And over the years, it has also done like really well with how it manages um, um, static, like, you know, like tree shaking as well. Static yeah. analysis of like modules. It's really, really good. It's, it, I think it does better than Webpack. So that's why I think it has won a lot. It's recently gaining a lot of favor. But I still think Webpack has the best tooling. You will find a Webpack plugin for anything you need. That's true. It's very <laughs> much so. Um, and yeah, if you, it's, it's very mature yeah. and reliable. So I think Rollup is still very experimental and a community still coming up with a lot of the tooling. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So now we've installed um, our loader. So the first thing we're going to do is going to go in an axe config file and we're going to import it. So we Let's import our chakra, chakra loader plugin, uh, from the chakra loader. Louder, louder, and uh, then we will add it as well in our in our webpack config. So you can extend your webpack config using the build to extend option. Extend is a function. It has the config. It it provides the config as a first argument, and um, right. Oh, okay. Yes, Lint was complaining. In the config, we're going to do config dot plugins dot push. And we'll pass in a new instance of the Chakra Loader plugin. Okay. Also, so this is so it that no, um, it does that static analysis. Exactly. Great. So this this plugin, uh, basically, what it, what the plugin does. So plugin uh, plugins are like a nice way of like encapsulating like behavior, very specific module behavior. Mm -hmm. So this plugin is only registering one loader, one webpack loader, which is the Chakra Loader. Um, Otherwise, it's just very verbose to do it yourself here because you'd have now to go through the <laughs> config, go to the modules option, yeah. find and then test like just a view file, then finally add your loader there. Kind of like those pre-webpack days. But a nice way to encapsulate that behavior is using a plugin like this, which is really cool. So it's just in one line, it does this all for you. Great. Cool. Um, so let's, let's run. The, yeah, it makes it very simple. So let's do yarn dev. Uh, finally restart our project with any luck this should work um, I think gonna, no, i'm sure it will yeah it, it it should i've been i've been i've been testing it very heavily <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna also save this file now because okay. we are just to like just to flex <laughs> exactly so you took out the import right yeah. Yeah, I took out the imports. Okay. Um, so now it, sh it should, okay, the build hasn't been initialized and it should now begin building the files. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Loading um, screens, the part you hate. Yeah, this is everyone's favorite part. I don't know why mm. people like this. Yeah, but I like that they have this nice, you know, thing that tells you what's going on. So this is more fun than watching. Yeah, this. than watching that. <laughs> Um, plus the Nax logo is nice to look at. It is. I, I love that um, they put a lot of thought in it. It's kind. Of, it's really nice. It's a. It's a neat. It's friendly. Yeah. It's a happy logo. Yeah. Wait, what what do you mean they put a lot of thought into it? I'm, is there like something I'm missing? It's like a message. I mean, I mean, it's really not for me. It, it's it's like. When I feel when I look at the brand that it has um, that Nax has kind of um, marketed itself as this logo mm. comes off as very friendly to me, um, so and and that has always been my experience using Nax. Um, yeah. It doesn't look like it's super like, you know, like you can you can tell a lot. You can feel like there's a, the feelings that I think different logos give you. Um, for example, the Versel logo is like yeah. the, that sharp triangle, like oh, it's also that. if. Clean, oh, clean but it also minimal. exactly it has this like very surgical feel to it like yes. when you look at it it, like, <laughs> it's, it has this exact thing um yeah. this this for me like feels friendly and that's why that's why i like it that's why i really like it um yeah so my guy here is uh very normally if i wasn't like doing like a zoom call or any running any other electron apps it would be very it should be done by now i, I totally understand it um, yeah, I we went through similar issues. So, um, 
<laughs> there we go. Great. It's done. It's done. It's done, my friend. And look. And it's working. Everything works. Awesome. Very well. Cool. With tree shaking. That's really cool. All right. Nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to delete everything in this file and just have a template. Um, template. And I have here. I'm going to just create a box component. And in this box, I would like to put in a hello, Michito. Not Michito. Michito. <laughs> Jobs. Um, exactly. Cool. And then you like this should uh, update. Cool. There it is. Hello, Michito Jobs. They're okay. Nice. Um, now, in our layout, I'm going to do a few things here. Um, we still have the, th I'm, I'm still, I still, I'm kind of like on the fence about whether you should keep it. So I'll just leave it as is. Uh, I'll leave this also as a div. Um, um, yeah. And I'm also going to delete all this, this script. We don't need the script here. All right. Let's we do just it. need a template. Purge. It feels a lot clearer. Yes. I don't know what theme recently VS Code started doing. So I, I've decided to start using kebab case because the, the colors are throwing me off. Um, oh, really? That, okay, because yeah, I was wondering, yeah. in, in the default, it's like, um, what is this called? Is this Pascal case? Um, yeah, it's Pascal case. And then, um, like, bec bec uh -huh. I don't know what, like, I think VS Code, because the colors were the same. But mm. now, like, if you use Pascal case in the template, for example, if I do a thing like box like this, now it feels like JSX, right? You can see. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's kind of weird. So, yeah. <laughs> I just so is I that why this, this you started using kebab case because like the docs use kebab case but like the template uses yeah. Pascal case so it was sort of confusing I was like am I doing the right thing Ooh, like my will it work oh. will it still import everything yeah it will still it will still work it will still import everything I just like I mean there's really no preference I mean of course the the, the loader has um uh, I'm analyzing to see whether it's kebab or or um Pascal and mm -hmm. then I will find that component. Yeah, so um, okay, let's go yeah, no need to worry. You can use whatever case you want. Awesome. Cool. They're all, actually, just to, for the record, the only reason I'm using kebab is because of the colors. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't like the Pascal case colors that VS Code started doing. 